Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Welcome back. Today we want to talk about eyelets again. Now this is a follow-up to my previous video on 10 amazing uses for eyelets. During that, I received a lot of requests for actual video on how to set eyelets. So let's get started. First, I do want to make a comparison or what is the difference between an eyelet and a grommet. So these are wide eyelets. This is a standard eyelet right here and I'm going to zoom in right there these this is an eyelet now when you talk about one that has two pieces that is a grommet which consists of let me show you a big one here consists of an eyelet and a washer it is a two-piece system and the way that those are set this is an anvil you put the anvil down then you put your eyelet on top of that your fabric or whatever your surface is with a hole in it over that then the washer smooth side up and then this is your setter you would lay that over there and hammer it in place very loud and so you would need a larger one of these obviously for this size of a grommet and most notably they're used for tarps and really heavy bags when you're setting an eyelet there are variables that can influence how successful you're going to be and that would be your eyelet itself, the tool you're using, the surface that you're putting the eyelet on, and that could be fabric, it could be paper, cardstock, chipboard, vinyl, adhesive, whatever, not adhesive, acetate, or could be acetate. And then the fourth thing is obviously the user, that's me. That's me putting the eyelets in there. So those four variables control my success level. Now, when I started using eyelets years ago, I would just buy whatever brand I saw. I would just dump them all in here. They're all mixed in. And I had this that I got it all from a fabric store. It served me well, but I realized that I wanted to branch out and do different sizes. I like the little tiny eyelets. And this was only one size. So I wanted to explore and figure out uh, new ways or new sizes. So we mentioned the four variables. The first one was the eyelet itself. So let's talk about that. Eyelets are aluminum. The stainless steel, if you want stainless steel, that you're going to have to go up to a grommet size. And you really wouldn't need that unless you are working with something that's going to get a lot of moisture, like a tarp, something that has to do with boating or a swim bag or something that's going to be getting wet. Doing paper crafts, which is what my channel is about, you wouldn't necessarily need a stainless steel eyelet. If you are in a super, super humid area, tell me what your thoughts are. Are you having problems with your eyelets resting? Because I, I never have, and I have lived in very humid areas, and I've never had problems with my eyelets resting. Sizes, they come in a variety of sizes, but mostly we're going to focus on, because I never really see them elsewhere, we're going to focus on the 1 8th and the 3 16th, which are the settings on the crocodile. Those are the two sizes. So these would be the 3 16ths. This is a standard 3 16th eyelet. I know there's a lot of glare. And this is a 1 8th inch right here. You can see that this is the 1 8th and the 3 16th. Okay. People have asked me where I get my containers from. These are from Joann's by the jewelry supply section. Get the glare off of that. And again, when I started buying these, even I did not pay attention to brand. I was picking them up at thrift stores and some of them do not do as well as others. So pay attention to brand. Quality of the eyelid, it greatly influences how successful you're going to be. I know that we are very frugal, we want to save ourselves some money, but frankly, if you buy cheap, you get cheap. And what I mean is, there are some that just don't do as well as others. And so the way an eyelet works, here is a large, the eyelet from a grommet. I wanna see if I can show you this. You could probably see that there are cracks in the metal right here on that shaft. And that is what allows that to spread apart around the other side. So there are tiny cracks, you can hardly even see it, but it does split, it splits and spreads out on the other side. And I think you can see pretty well on one of these as well. Look at the very tip of that. There's little cracks in it. 
And so that is what helps it to split when you're smashing it down. I've had eyelets that all of the, I call them little flanges or fingers, on the other side of the eyelet when I'm done, all of them are on like one side and it's all bare on the other side. It's like, what happened? But there is such a thing as a cheap eyelet. Yes, I know we want to buy something affordable, but we have to be careful. Um, made in China is not the same as made in China. Does that make sense? <laughs> So you may have a company, a reputable brand in the U.S. or wherever you live that has their eyelets made in China, but they are into quality control. They are supervising. They are making sure that they get the quality that they need of an eyelet made. And so when they uh, produce their eyelets, they know that you can trust them. So they are supervising the process and making sure you get a really good eyelet. Whereas just buying some bulk um, from China eyelet on eBay, for instance, you really could get something that really doesn't work well. Uh, one of my viewers states that the paint on her eyelets chips off. I have never seen that happen. Um, and some of these are really old. I've gotten them from thrift stores and they've been in someone's grandma's sewing you know, kit for years and they have not chipped off. So be careful about quality. The other thing uh, that really influences, or the other variable that really influences the success is the tool itself. So again, I mentioned that this was the first tool I had. I want you to notice something about this. There is an angle here and here, and that is necessary. When you have, uh, if it was just pure straight like this, it's coming at the eyelet at an angle. You don't want that. You want it to come at your eyelet as straight as possible, you know, as like, perfectly straight as possible. That's why they have that bend. And although this does come at an angle, these do wobble around a little bit to help to kind of align it so it comes at it at a good degree. Well, when I knew I wanted to be able to do more sizes, I didn't know what my other options were. So I started watching videos and I saw that there was something called a Fisker's Punch and Eyelet Setter. I'm going to give you a picture of that on the screen right over here right now. This is what it looks like. And very interesting. And so you, it's like a post, almost like a pencil, but it's spring loaded and you would lay it, you would put your eyelet where you want it. First of all, it could make the hole as well, but you would set it down and it's spring loaded. You would pick it up and let go and it would spring and spring and spring and the, and the force of that would set the eyelet. Uh, very loud. Uh, it was, they're effective. They're easy to travel with because it's like having a pen. But on the other hand, that spring is also easily sprung, meaning you pull it too hard, it never goes back in shape. Uh, and I have seen that happen. And then I decided maybe I didn't want that. And I noticed that there were people using this type of setting with the anvil and the setter and a hammer to do their eyelets. Well, it is very loud, very loud and shakes your entire table. So my next thing was I saw this Provo Craft Silent Setter. So I bought this. I thought this would be the solution. It has these, it has this little mini, uh, really thick, cutting mat. It has three sizes, although I've never seen eyelets this tiny. It has three sizes of hole punches and three sizes of setters. So basically, and again, it's called silent because there's no hammer. So what you would do is you would take the hole, for instance, you put on your paper and you would just push down and twist really hard, remove that, and you would put the setter in you would put the eyelet down and put that over it and push down and do the same thing. What I discovered is this is really hard to use. It wobbles left and right and all over the place. It takes a lot of hand strength. And I didn't think that this really was good enough. The, the little finger that comes off the center here to go down the eyelet was not long enough. I didn't find that I had great success with it. But it's a matter of personal choice, and it does come with some tiny eyelets here. But again, I didn't find that it was helpful for me. I, it was too much strength required, and there's no way to make sure you were going completely perpendicular down to your project. That's the issue. So then I finally heard of the crocodile, and that changed everything for me. To me, this is worth the investment. So this is the original crocodile. 
It has two hole punches, one for each size, the 1 8 and the 3 16 and then you adjust these cubes, they're called. You adjust them to match your project. This is what the instruction sheet looks like. And many have told me that their instruction sheet didn't even, it didn't come with instructions or they've lost their instructions. I'm giving you a link down below to my blog post in which I give you these instruction sheets. So the instruction sheets do tell you which way to set the cube for your project. So one of the things I love about these is they are super heavy duty. They, uh, they don't just cut paper, they will cut through chipboards. So I love that, they're super strong. So if you're making book covers, that is a wonderful thing. Oh, I also mentioned I'm giving you a link down below to getting the uh, instructions. I'm also gonna give you a link below to my first video on how to use this. And I will give you a link down below to getting replacement cubes because people have had these pop out and get lost and so you will need to be able to know how to get replacement cubes. Okay, so now let's talk about the settings on this. If you are doing the small 1 8 inch eyelet, you will need to set this at C3. So C is the top cube. And there it is. That's what faces the eyelet. And then three also. So C3 is what faces each other. Okay, it's not what faces you when you're looking at it. It's what faces each other, C3. And there is, let's zoom in again. I call this a little finger. That is what goes down into the top side or the pretty side of the eyelet in every case. And so then if we're going to do the bigger eyelet, we're going to use A1. And that's what that would look like. Okay, we'll do a demo in a bit. So the tools matter. If you, and if you are trying to reach into a project, you see my reach isn't very big to get this into, into a project. I can't go in very far. That's when you would need the big bite. This goes in up to six inches into a project. In other words, it will reach right into the middle of a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. And this little ruler here enables you to set it at how far you want to go in. Let's say you want to set multiples. You could put it up against, you could butt it up against that ruler and you could set eyelets like that. So it's a perfect solution. I love it. And it has the same exact same cube settings that you will have on the regular crocodile. And here is what the instruction sheet looks like for that. Again, I'm giving you a link to both instruction sheets down below. Okay, so now we, talk, we talked about the eyelets and the setter. What about the actual surface? What are you using to put an eyelet on? Is it fabric? Is it paper? Is it chipboard? What is the surface? And so I use cardstock almost exclusively, although I do use vinyl and craft text and other things. So I'm going to use this big grommet uh, so that you can see what I'm talking about. This shaft here has a certain height and it does on every eyelet. And so that whole shaft needs to expand, bend, and flatten out over the surface of what you're making. If you're using something that's too thin, like one sheet of cardstock, sometimes that, that eyelet has too far to move. It has too far to bend for those phalanges to come over. And so it would be loose and then also rough on the back. So one thing you could do is to take maybe a small, if you have this problem, what you could do is to take a piece of, another piece of cardstock, and you could put that over the back. You could punch the hole and set the eyelet so that you have two layers of cardstock. It just helps to, to make it thicker so that when you're bending this around, it fits better. That's just one option uh, if you have a thin surface like that. Now, the user, and that's me, <laughs> my technique in, you, in setting eyelets does matter. So we want to be able, again, to come at a perpendicular to the eyelet. So if this is my eyelet, I don't want to come at it at an angle. I want to come at it straight down. That's the beauty of this one. This perfectly comes at it straight down. There is no angle at it whatsoever. This one does really well too. They have a, the, this double hinge system in here that means that it comes down 
perfectly on your project. It doesn't come at an angle. So people who say that when they set an eyelet, it kind of is, instead of going flat down, it's kind of smooshed at an angle. That's because the setter is at an angle. Do you see that finger there and this base? How they're not really uh, perfectly perpendicular until they get right down there at the very last second. It can cause a problem with, again, it being smashed on one end and still not closed on the other end. And also your settings. So if you don't have it set to the right setting, this is, again, this is set for the small ones, which is C3. If you don't, and I try to do a big eyelet on here, it's not going to work. So you have to have the right cube settings. Another thing that would cause it to go wrong would be to have my eyelet flipped around the other way. The finger always goes in the pretty end of the eyelet. If I put it down with the pretty end down instead of that, then it's going to, again, it's not going to work right. Let's set some eyelets and then we'll talk about unevenness or roughness on the back of the project. Okay, now I am going, since I have the, let's use this one. I have this one set for the regular eyelets. So this is a 3 16th. So if you notice on the right here on the black part, it says 1 8th and on the black part, it says 3 16th. So this is the 3 16th hole punch. I want to use that. And when I look down in here, I'm going to see if you can see this well. Yeah, you can. Great. There is a hole right here on this metal piece. So let's assume that I had drawn a dot on my project. I'm going to draw another one right there. I drew a dot on my project so that I could tell where I wanted that eyelet to go. So I'm going to take the 3 16th, center it over that dot. See, I'm trying to get it to where you can see it, not I can see it. And then I'm just going to squeeze it. It is such a gentle squeeze. Sometimes, and you notice that the paper tends to get stuck in there. So sometimes if you're doing a lot of projects right after each other, I kind of have to poke that through so I can see my where I'm going again. Okay, you could do chipboard, etc. I notice when I do acetate that it usually gets stuck in there. So sometimes when I punch the hole, I slide it like this on acetate and that will completely remove the inside of that hole I punched. Okay, so that again is my 3 16th. So now I'm going to take an eyelet and I'm going to put it in here. Let's say, let's do it this way. This is the pretty side of my paper. So let's assume that's what I want to be the pretty side. So I'm going to put the eyelet down in there, pretty side up, pretty side of paper up, pretty side of eyelet up. And I have this set at the A1 that's what my cubes are set at. And that finger on that side there, that's the top. That goes down into the pretty side of the eyelet. But here's the trick. I'm holding the paper up against that eyelet. Can you see that? I'm not putting the eyelet down and trying to squeeze it. I'm pushing the eyelet up into the finger and holding the paper up. And then I'm going to squeeze gently until it stops. You see how these phalanges have spread pretty evenly all the way around? That's a perfect. Now, the roughness is natural because we have cut aluminum all around there. But see, I can rub my finger over there and it's not cutting me. You can tell the roughness though when you push down and try to slide your finger. Yes, it's going to catch. So if you have one that is still rough after all your best efforts, meaning it's too rough and you don't want it that rough, I lay it down on an extra cutting board and sometimes I put like a dish rag right on my surface, a dish rag on a hard surface, lay it on there and I just conk it with a hammer a couple times and it finishes flattening it out completely and it saved me a lot of trouble. If it is difficult for you to do this where you are holding that paper up and you, it just feels unnatural, you could do it the other way where we can turn this upside down where the finger is down instead of up and flip our project upside down as well. Slide the eyelet on that finger and again, just hit it slowly. Just remember that the eyelet, this pretty side is always, uh, we're going to hold that against this finger side on our cube. Okay, so 
that is two of those and these are two different brands and I can see that completely here I want you to see if you can see here the difference in the gold one sticks up more from my paper than the red one and it's still but it still did really well it's just a different brand okay so now let's do one of the smaller eyelets that was the 3 16th. Let's do the 1 8th. Again, I'm going to lay my, oops, yeah, lay this over until I see that dot in there. Punch the hole. Grab one of the small eyelets. Let's use this blue one here. I don't know what brands all of these are because it's been so long since I bought many of them, I know that all of these ones here are the We Are Memory Keepers ones that I have in my shop. Okay, so now we need to switch this over because we have, we're working with the, the small eyelet. So we need C3. You kind of lift it away from the base, spin it, and then click it back down. Okay, we're going to take this, get that finger right in the eyelet, hold the paper up against the top, squeeze and I, this one actually like pops when it cracks and separates and you can see that this one it isn't as even but I find that this is more common with the small ones and especially this brand okay so the other thing is besides hammering the backs of these if you need to is to practice 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 that you know see what I just did you can do this on a, a scrap piece and then if you really like it and it's pretty cut these up and use them as embellishments in your projects. So this has the exact same cube settings as the handheld. This is heavy, but it's not un it's not impossible to use. I will give you a link down below to how to use this. This has the eyelet setter and it has that 1 8 inch hole punch, 3 16 inch hole punch. So when you have it set on hole punch, the eyelet setter does not come down, but the punch comes down right here. And then when you want to do the eyelet setter, you switch it back, and now the eyelet setter comes down. Cubes work the same way. It is phenomenal. So those are the two crocodiles, and I think that has changed for me the world of setting eyelets. One more thing is if you have an issue with setting an eyelet, and maybe it's maybe you can just transform your personal eyelet setter this way. Like if you have one of these, let's say you had one of these, and it's crooked in that it the uh, one side is better flat flattened than the other. Just put it back in there and squeeze, spin, squeeze, spin, squeeze, and that will even it out. If you know if that's the kind that you have. So I hope that was very helpful. Make sure you look down below. I'm also going to give you a link to the 10 awesome ways to use eyelets in your paper projects.